we'll take a carriage. No one will see us. I know a nice little inn at Foxport. They serve a lovely supper there. You will be the most beautiful woman in that room. Believe me. And I will tell you stories of seamen's lives. Tell me, have you ever heard of Rio de Janeiro? Or the car? You should, you know. It'd be very good for your work. Geography wouldn't be as painful to your students if you'd spend one evening with me. Hmm? And will you tell me about your last trip with Quentin Collins? Till every detail. I can stay over. I can stay. Laura just came back from Collinwood, and poor Mrs. Collins is so upset about Roxanne that, that Laura's taking us in for the night. There, you see? No excuses. Well, hello, Carrie. Welcome back. Hello, Desmond. All right, Carrie, if that's what Mrs. Collins wants, it's fine. But I do have to be getting back. I'll take it back. No, it's all right. I've got my carriage. And I will see you in an hour. Oh, no, no. One hour and a half. You don't waste much time, do you? She's very pretty. I wouldn't go out with her if I were you. Is that a friendly word of advice? Because you're in no situation to hand out ultimatums. Not about Daphne, perhaps. But about you in this house, I am. I am a guest here of your mother's. We will see how long that will be. You better get used to me being around. I'm going to be here quite a while. I'm a very good friend. Gerard, my mother may be fond of you, as you say, but she is not a very stable woman. When she loses trust in someone, she can be very cold. Well, then I shall have to make sure that I don't lose her trust, shan't I? For you, that will be very hard to do. By the way, a journal is missing. An old one, a curio of mine. Have you seen it? No, I'm afraid I haven't. You'll have to find some other way to discredit me with Flora, Desmond. It's good not to see you again, Judah Zachary. <laughs> However, what a joy it is to see you. <laughs> you are my insurance. Or better yet, my inheritance from the late Judah Zachary. <laughs> yes, you are my windfall on that inevitable rainy day. That is, of course, if Desmond should ever try. <sighs> I'm rather tired. Perhaps I shall take a little nap. Carrie! Yes, Gerard? I'm going to take a little nap for about a half an hour. Will you wake me? I'll be happy to, Gerard. Thank you.
What is it? There's the nicest man to see you. He says you expect him. Thank you, my dear. I wasn't expecting you. What do you want? Well, sure you, surely you must know who I am. You must have been expecting me. It would have been very foolish not to. This isn't the time for games, you know. You have been playing a game, a most dangerous game. Though, of course, sometimes they afford the most pleasure. What do you want from me? I don't want anything from you. I was sent to give you something. This! Thank you, my dear. Who are you? Surely you must know who I am. You must have been expecting me. You would have been very foolish not to. This isn't the time for playing games, you know, and you have been playing a game. A most dangerous game. Though, of course, sometimes they afford the most pleasure. What do you want from me? I don't want anything from you. I was sent to give you something. This! Staring at Mr. Styles. No. No! But you know what this is. You didn't really think you could get rid of it, did you? Look at him, Mr. Styles. Where did you get that? Who are you? His servant, as my great grandfather was. Just look at him, Mr. Styles. waited so long for your return, Judah. You, you will call me Gerard. As you will. Take that away. Keep it and guard it well. How many people are in our cupboard now? Only six. We have need to complete the 13. Will I know their names? Will their ancestors follow me as yours did? Some of them. And the others? What happened to the others? The ones who swore eternal allegiance? They were afraid. When the trial was over, they returned to the other faith. 
I can move again. I feel the warmth within my body. I know who my enemies are. I live amongst them. But we must go carefully. Are you giving me orders? No, but you must realize... I that... realize everything. Do you? You have been invincible for so long, you are not now. <laughs> Do you think that I would let anyone kill me? Gerard Stiles' body can die. It won't. But you must be careful. Your body is mortal. Never forget that. It has powers. Yes. You have powers, more than I, more than anyone in our coven. That is why we will do as you tell us. Just before I died, as the hooded executioner raised his axe, I vowed that this moment would come. That I would punish all those responsible. She still lives here in Collinwood. She is now the wife of Barnabas Collins. She calls herself Valerie. She still knows me as Gerard Stiles. It will remain that way until the golden moment. But she will not be the first. No. There were three judges at my trial. And out of all them, only one family survives. That of Amadeus Collins. Now there will be a new witchcraft trial. With a new prisoner in the dock. With a new executioner. And this time, I will be the witness. And the man's head on the block will be that of Quentin Collins. Samantha finds it hard to believe that Roxanne is really dead. I doubt if she'll be able to attend the funeral. I think, aside from Tad, that well, Samantha loved Roxanne more than anyone else. Except you, of course. I sympathize with you also, Trask. I know how fond you were of Roxanne. My life had a meaning it never had before. I cannot forget the look on her face the last time I saw it. And I cannot forget her strange, curious illness. Do you not think it an odd way to die in this day and age, to bleed to death? Julia found it as mysterious as you do. Mr. Collins, I feel I must speak with utter frankness. Perhaps Dr. Julia Collins was not the right person to treat my poor Roxanne. She was successful with her before, Trask. Yes, but she does have her brother to protect. Barnabas? Roxanne came to this house shortly before the bleeding started. Did you know that? No. She told me herself that she saw Barnabas. I'm sure that she saw other people. Other people are not important. Trask, you're becoming ridiculous. Am I? Am I indeed? You know, you have such an obvious dislike for Barnabas. He did nothing to Roxanne. Nothing? Listen to me, Quentin Collins. I don't know what Barnabas did, but I will find out because I believe more firmly than I've ever believed anything in my life that Barnabas Collins caused Roxanne to die. I've never heard anything so absurd in all my life. Just how did he do it? I told you I don't know. Barnabas was here. You were with Roxanne when the bleeding started. I'm aware of that. And yet you refuse to be logical. Logic will not give us the answer to this. Now, you obviously mean something by that. What? There is a world, an evil world which exists for some men. These men deal with the dark forces, learn their arts. Are you accusing Barnabas of witchcraft? You, of course, will defend him. If you are accusing him, I certainly will. Be careful, Quentin Collins, with whom you ally yourself. You know, I don't believe this conversation. Trask, I think you're losing your mind. 
You will regret saying that. I won't regret anything. And I don't want to hear another word about Barnabas. Well, you will hear more. Much more in due time. And if I do, it won't be in this house. It'll be someplace where I can walk out of. Do you understand? Indeed, I do, sir. The devil himself has friends who try to shield him, too. I tried to warn. 